Hello there and welcome to Sister Sister. It's another weekend. We're totally thrilled to come your way once again. It's your favorite all women relationship talk show that comes to you live from City FM and City TV every single week. Now, I'd like to say a special thank you to our sponsors, Vodafone, Together We Can, Geisha, Geisha, African Strength, and Kel Kids Toothpaste. Happy smiles. When we come back, I'll let you know exactly how you can be part of this conversation. Plus, we get to meet my sisters, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Sister Sister on City TV and City FM. So there are various ways that you can be part of this conversation today. You can send a quick WhatsApp to 054-998-6996, prefix it with plus 233 if you're messaging us from outside Ghana. Alternatively, you can send an email to jessica at cityfmonline.com or just simply um, find us on Facebook at Sister Sister L-I-V-E, Sister Sister Live. Like our page, join our growing community. We'll Thank you for that. Now, um, let's say hello to my sisters in studio with me today and, of course, abroad. Um, for now, though, I'll start with Drea and Rosina. Ladies, so good to see you. Good to see you. Why a fool? Like, what was the Kisha? What was the Kisha? Life. Drea, eh? Life. Life, eh? Celebrating. Life. Look really We're well. We're alive. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Choosing yeah. to be happy. Choosing to be happy? Yeah. yeah. That's good. We need to choose to be happy every Absolute, single time. Absolutely, ev every single time. Mm -hmm. Choose to be happy. Yeah, yeah, super stuff. Claudia, how are you doing in Berlin? I'm good, I'm good. And you? Oh, I'm all right, can't complain, you know. <laughs> Life and living it. Life and yeah. living it, exactly, exactly. All right, ladies, we'll jump right into our messages. Um, and the first one's coming in from Kojo. It says, I want your input on this issue urgently. So nine years ago, a lady I barely knew who had who I had affection for visited me. Now, prior to the visit, she was in a sexual relationship with a different man. When she visited, she spent three days with me in my house, and we had unprotected sexual intercourse. She called a month later to tell me she was pregnant and that I was responsible. Sisters, I never saw her again, but she kept updating me on the pregnancy and eventually delivered through C-section. The main issue now is I have put all efforts for the past nine years for her to bring the child for a DNA test to confirm if the child is indeed mine. Can you imagine that I've never seen the child before as she has refused to bring him? All I know is that she resides in Kaswa. I'm thinking of going to Dovsu and taking legal action to trace her residence and compel her to bring the child for a DNA test. What do you ladies think? <laughs> Drea? What do you think? <laughs> DNA test. Bring the child. <coughs> wow. Yeah. Does a child exist? That's the question. That's my question. Is there a child? Because <laughs> you see, if he was saying that he's been paying for the upkeep of a child, then I would insist absolutely find this woman and find this child and do DNA. But how do you tell somebody I'm pregnant for you and then fall off the grid for nine years? Mm. Uh, this one over me. Over you. Oh. No, what does he want to do? He said he wants to go to Dove Soup. Yeah. And, but he doesn't and even know where she lives. Action. Yeah, so they find it. Oh. If you can find it, Charlie, no, this one over me. Like, wow. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Okay. If indeed you can find her, absolutely do. And yes, insist on DNA. And if the child is yours, then you need to find out who falls off the grid with someone's child. So yeah, I, I think he's on the right path. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. You over me small. Yeah. Maybe I'll come back, but he can't for me small right now. Okay. She has stolen a child for nine years. Yeah, hey, that's pretty it. much. Am I being so Please go to somebody else, right? This one over me. Wow. Claudia, yeah, that's somebody else. I have of the same opinion. I'm actually confused. Listen, where do we start? Like, I mean, nine years. Uh, maybe oh, some oh, nine oh, days oh, or nine yes. months, but nine years. Please, every one more. Mm. And you don't know her, her house. It's only her phone. I don't know if it's illegal to track her phone using GPS because the police can do that. Be able to track a person's location because now with all these smartphones, we think we are so secure, but we are not. <laughs> So probably one app 
But is he still in legal. touch? It has mm -hmm. to be legal, seriously. And on what grounds are you, is it because by word of mouth she told you and because of that you believe her? Um, I also feel that sometimes when you have a suspicion, until you deal with it, you don't have that peace of mind. So I, I suspect now he's very anxious and it's, it's, he wants closure. And I, I, I would advise him to find that closure. Dosu, hmm. And going to the police on what grounds? I think you should talk to a lawyer and see what they have to say. Mm. They would tell you whether to go to the police and become, because you don't know a house. I don't know if you have mutual friends. You give us very little to work with. Mm. So I would advise you to talk to a lawyer and see what they are the experts in this case. I don't know if you can even compel a, a person to have a DNA test. I, I know a court can compel you, but I don't know the case in Ghana. So it's over me. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you over Claudia, they are in trouble. Charlie. Yeah, please tell me no over you. <laughs> Rosina. You over me, but I, I, won't, I won't look sharp. I won't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> but <it's really. laughs> because, unless, of course, I mean, the only way I'm, I can understand this text for what it truly. Okay, so. Unless, of course, when the lady told you she was pregnant, you doubted it because you felt she only came to you for just a couple of days and you probably never, ever really supported her. And then as soon as the baby was born, all you are saying is, come, bring the baby, let's do DNA test. Now, yeah, mommy, nay, he. Say, okay, wouldn't matter. You slept with me and I've told you that, you know, I have a baby for you. You never did anything. And the only thing that can come out of your mouth is bring the woman, bring the baby for us to do a DNA test. And th that's, the, that's the, the closest excuse I can have mm. for the lady saying that, okay, you know what? If, it's, if you need a DNA test to really ascertain that this is your child, then you know what? Let me just take care of my own child right. and decides to kick you out of the picture. And it's possible that you yourself have not been in touch really for the nine years. Like you, 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 like you be there and like two, three years. Charlie, my, my, my child, I've not seen my child yet too. Won't you bring her over or him over so we have a DNA test? So the thing today over the woman, and the woman is like, look, I won't bring the child. That's the only explanation I can <laughs> give, the remotest. But however, being a woman, being an African woman for that matter, every woman desires that the father of the child even if it's not supposed to be public knowledge, would at least own up to the child one way or the other. Or maybe the pregnancy was from somewhere. That's why she was so comfortable to move into your house for three days and fire you because she saw you as somebody who could really take care of the child. And unfortunately, you were not up for that kind of n nonsense of, oh, because I stayed with you and you say you are pregnant. No, it means that it's mine. They'll have to take it hook, line, sinker and take care of the child. Or maybe, like Sandra said, there is no child. <laughs> It's just the way of milking you, Charlie. I, I'm pregnant. Okay, then no, I need to do this. Updating you on every stage. Like I need to go for antenatal. They said I should buy this medicine. They said I should do this. And the fact that I even gave it by CS, so which means that it's more expensive than a natural birth. So maybe it was the way the woman was milking you, and the fact that you cannot find her was it made the milking you easier. <laughs> so maybe there's no child. But okay, so he says she was updating him. Mm -hmm throughout the pregnancy yes. yes at any point say did you try and find her throughout this pregnancy because this story is very weird yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what i'm saying like you you actually know she gave birth through CS, but you've never seen the child mm -hmm. like well, yes yeah, so she said it basically you've, hospital you've sat down, she in? exactly you've basically sat down for nine months and and nine years hmm. Do you get what I mean? Because there was a nine-month pregnancy, which came from a three-day. So it's been ten years, basically. That's it's been I'm ten. That, so look, you haven't seen this woman in ten years, and randomly you want to see a child? No, mm. but you know that's what I'm saying. That this guy now, maybe because he's the one writing the message, he's written it to make himself look okay. If that's what unless it is, he's not course, okay. Like I said, unless of course, when the lady said I was pregnant, his mannerisms, his behavior, to the extent that somebody says I'm pregnant for you, and you don't even know where the person lives mm. for ten years. Cross, no, I'm talking the nine month process yeah you, you, you didn't even care to go and see where the person lives which hospital the person is going to you didn't care about anything of that so i'm i'm thinking that look he probably 
call the girl's bluff. That look, this cannot be my child. You only came to my house. We had an unprotected sex for like two, three days. And maybe he's going to see some pastor. She'll come. And then the pastor is hmm. saying that, look, you have a child somewhere you have neglected. And all of a sudden, he's trying to look for the child. I mean, if that is the case, the woman will not be you know, crazy about coming to show the child to you because she would have felt like, look, you neglected us for all this while. Why are you showing up all of a sudden saying that you want to see your child when your child is nine years? Hello? If for nine years you don't know where your child lives, you don't know where the mother of your child lives, after nine years you're not <laughs> thinking of going to Dove Sue. Me, from the man's angle, there are so many questions to be answered. So many questions. Yeah. And the man lives in Kasua. The woman lives in Kasua. It's still within greater Accra. It's, it's just, look, I can move from here to Kasua and come back within an hour or two. Mm. So my question is that it's not like the girl is living way out of your jurisdiction. It's still within Ghana. So, so my dear, I'm thinking that this message is either incomplete or flawed. For me, um, okay. So this is what I'm going to take out of this. One, people, do not be having sex with people you Thank do not you. know. Like that's I, this. I'm not. I'm not even tackling this message as it is because this it has too many questions. It has overed us. But the lessons I'm learning from it. One, do not be having sex with people you do not know. If you have to protect yourself. If you if you have to, absolutely use protect. In fact. In fact, use protection either ways because there's diseases, mm. there's pregnancy that can disappear for 10 years and then you'll be writing stuff there and overing us. Like, yeah. we could have avoided this if you had used a condom. Yes, you get what and, I mean? and, and not be over it like yeah, this. Yeah, there won't be over it like this. That's one. Claudia is speechless. Two. Oh, sorry. The woman, too, eh? Like, I know, and, 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 and this is addressing something that Rosina was saying. I know women who do all of that, oh, the, the husband or the, the baby daddy refused the pregnancy from the get-go, and so I will not allow him into the child's life. I think that position needs a lot of rethinking mm. because whether we like it or not, children need their fathers. Mm. No matter what a douchebag the baby daddy is, you as a woman chose to have a baby with him. We are questioning your choices. To even sleep with him. Yes, mm. yes. To and sleep with him. I, I, I get that. And you, not even knowing you him. You made the choice to have sex with him, whatever he is. Whatever he is. You made choice to have sex with somebody who wasn't responsible enough to take or claim the pregnancy. Your child does not deserve to be without a father. So, yes, your choices in men is questionable. But that's past. Please give your child what your child requires. All right, yeah. Claudia. Yes. Um, I was also thinking that perhaps he can change his approach. So instead of aggressively seeking for a DNA test, he should call this woman, apologize for being absent all this while, and <laughs> tell her that he wants to be in the child's life. He yeah. wants to be the father that he's never been. He wants to step up and be the man. This is what he should be doing and see what the lady says. Maybe then you have an opportunity to see the child build a relationship. And sometimes if I give you cinema, it's your photocopy. So that there's no even a need for Which is usually the case. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the stubborn ones always look like Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. You <laughs> cannot deny it. This is your child. Hmm. Yeah. So you should change his approach of this. I want a DNA. I want a DNA. Yeah. Apologize to her. And for, I'm, I'm, I'm basing this on a text that he's not been there because I don't see him saying I was at the hospital or I tried to get to the hospital and she prevented me. I tried to go to a house and she prevented me. He's hell bent on getting to the dad or mm. not and not caring about her condition, her surgery. He wasn't there, blah, blah, blah. So he should change his approach. Apologize to her. You want to be in your son's life. You've, you've spoken to elders, they've advised you, you've seen the error in your ways, how can you compensate her? How can you build a relationship? And see what she has to say. For me, this whole thing sounds really, really fishy. It's like the biggest ruse in, in Ghanaian history, you know, <laughs> where a, a child can just, just disappear for nine years. Um, from the guy's message, it, it doesn't even sound like he's supported her financially. Yeah, you know, no, yeah. because I know if a man has done that, he would definitely he would say he's saying the child. But no, no, he'd have said it. Yes, he'd have I said it. I paid her bills. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. He didn't say anything. So it's yeah. like Charlie, you just showed up out of the blue and you want to be in your, your child's life. So yeah, we're getting that pushback. Mm, he's probably, he was probably maybe there is a woman. Maybe there is a baby. Maybe there isn't. You know, but whatever it is, I think you should, like Claudia said, lure him in. Your you, know and, you know, and um, let's see if this is actually true. And you haven't been sitting there for nine years as an absentee father, because if you have, then that's 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 actually pretty bad. Um, so don't do the whole Dobsu Liga action thing. 
try and you know reason with the woman and see if that would bring the child to you okay we wish you the best of luck and do write back to the show let us know exactly how that goes we'll go for a quick commercial break when we return more of your messages Welcome back to Sisters Still on City TV and City FM. Remember your comments are welcome. 54 998 is our WhatsApp number. You can also send an email to jessica at cityfmonline.com. Second message on the show today says, Hello, sisters. My problem is a touchy one. I can't talk about it to anyone close to me about, uh, for fear of being ridiculed. Sisters, my wife for the past three years has been hitting me. Mm. We've been married for five years, and we have a set of four-year-old twins. I do everything expected of a man in the home. I provide financially. I spend time with the kids. I try as much as possible to make them happy. Three years ago, my wife joined a social club where they go out and have fun and engage in other social activities. Initially, I had no problems until I got wind of her closeness with this particular guy in the group. I raised my concerns, concerns about this friendship, and all hell broke loose sisters she slapped me and ever since then it's like i unleashed a monster from throwing things at me to even pulling a knife on me one time my question is if she doesn't have anything to do with the guy why the abuse i was raised never to hit a woman so i'll never hit her back but right now i'm really confused how did the woman who swore to love me till death suddenly change and hate me so much that she'll choose another man over me and further on keep hitting me at the least opportunity? Please help me. I'm a confused, broken man. Wow. Rosina, you want to go it's into too heavy. Yeah, it's really, really, it's too really heavy. <laughs> <sighs> Usually you hear it the other way around, where mm -hmm. a, a wife sees being, a man cheating yeah. and you go and say some no, okay, pa, 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 they, they give you one or two, but you know, to hear the, the reverse and to, to, to hear that the man has since not retaliated, it's, 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 it's quite shocking mm. and it's very heavy on me and I feel such pain on behalf of the man. Now the question that he asks is very legit. If there was nothing in it between her and the man, she shouldn't have reacted the way she did, which means that there is indeed something going on between her and the man. Now, the social club, I would like to know what kind of social club it is. Mm. Unless, of course, they are, they are a club of... Uh, <coughs> I don't know whether I can say it. Whatever <laughs> time, maybe they're into all these um, kinky things, kinky stuff. Okay. You know, maybe it's more like a sexual club, like and they're into all of some something. swingers club, and they're into all these BD, BDSM, BDSM <laughs> things, and um, these. Um, oh boy! You know, so because of that, she's suddenly been introduced to violence as a source of intimacy. And she's, and then there's this monster in her that she never she thought existed. Then all of a sudden, somebody unearthed it. So maybe whoever it is that he's close with, cry. If they are sexual, I don't expect their sexual, their, their sexual encounters to be very, you know, like you know, baby, I love you. Maybe you know, hair grabbing, hey. turn around, body and um, dress tearing, hmm. chaining, and all manner of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the <laughs> only thing that can excuse the sudden behavior because irrespective of even how you react, this is your husband we are talking about. There should be some form of respect. Even if you are doing it crying and you want to be defensive, you can be defensive, but it's within limits. Mm. You know, sometimes when you are caught, for some people, the first response is no, like trying to be you know, defensive. That's okay, but there should be limits. Mm. But for you to raise your hand, and decide to slap your husband when he has reason to look even there shouldn't be anything there for him to ask you once he suspects it there should be open lines Dialogue. for communication Absolutely. in the, in a relationship so if the husband comes and say that oh you and this guy have gotten awfully close i mean is there reason for concern oh no babes i mean it's just a social club i mean if you're even interested you can actually join us end of story yeah. but for you to raise your hand and decide to slap your husband mm -hmm. 
and decide to pull up a knife on your husband, decide to do all of these things. For me, I don't know whether you, you maybe, I don't know whether she, she has been cloned and rebirthed into your home, or I don't know what the, I don't know what the issue is. And for me, it's very sad. Now, for this man, this is obviously an extremely toxic relationship because women hardly do these things. Most of the time, men do it, maybe because of what they've seen, or maybe because of the fact that, oh, they feel like they've been schooled to think that, you know. And, but if the woman is the one doing this to you, I try to be careful. Mm. I don't know whether you get my mm. point. Because a woman who truly loves a man, it's very difficult for them to want to physically hurt their man. Unless, of course, the man has done something to them and they are retaliating. That's right. different. But for her to be the one you know the aggressor the aggressor mm. is, is is a bit difficult for me to take <laughs> in so if you can't talk about it for these things to stop and she hasn't shown any sign of remorse or she's not even sorry about what she's doing and she keeps doing it then clearly the marriage is extremely toxic and it's time you consider how to exit it doesn't mean you should just get up and move I need to start mm. considering, like having an exit plan. Start planning your exit. And most of the time, it starts with detaching yourself emotionally from the other party. So once you're emotionally detached, then walking away becomes easier. The, 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 the difficult part is when you're not emotionally detached and you walk away, and then you become a boyfriend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that kind of thing. You wouldn't want that also. So I think that you need to start i mean you should see a counselor to begin with i mean mm -hmm. a professional counselor i'm not talking about like a proper professional counselor to see what they can do but where it has gotten to i i think she's crossed some lines that it's going to be very difficult to come back from I, I don't know yeah like there's slapping some some lines ish. the knives and then the slapping and then the violence the, the violence <laughs> It's, it's just too much. It's just too much. I think the social club, no. What is happening there? <laughs> I mean, you. I want to know what kind of a social club it is. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Mm. Because in a marriage, see, if I'm not mm. comfortable with something, I should be able to tell you that I'm not comfortable with this. You're hanging out with this person. It's, 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 it's not right. It's not, And it's your duty as my other partner to allay my fears mm -hmm. and vice versa. Right. When you also have a concern, like you somebody I'm hanging it. out with, you raise it, I, I try and explain what kind of relationship we have. If it doesn't sit well with you, we try and see how we can work around it. Especially if it's not a pattern. Like everybody I hang out with, you're complaining. No. If it comes isolated like that, you should be able to address it. I mean, you can't be in a marriage and decide that you want to do everything however you want to do it. It's your way. Nobody can. If somebody raises a, a different, you know, pa, 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 slaps. No, no, no. Can't do that. And it's sad for a woman to do that. I'm actually highly disappointed. Mm. Sure. Say, I'm sorry. Very. Say, I apologize most sincerely. You do not deserve what's going on. I beg you, mm -hmm. we sit at this table. If it was a woman, we'd be asking her to oh, leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it was a woman. But the man, I am so sure. pleased. So I'm not going to excuse her bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Say, leave her. Do not come with any of those excuses of, oh, we have twins, we have children. I, no, you can die. Mm, nice. Look, look, mm. look. Ah, nice. Let's, mm, let's, nice stop, let's stop the games. Let's stop trying it's, it's a sexual club. It's, no, she is an abusive woman. She has slapped you. She has continued to hit you for three years. She has pulled a knife. Say, what are you waiting for? Why are your family members? You can die. Oh. Look, the people who make excuses for abusers themselves need help. You know, I'm passionate. Like, I'm getting upset because hmm. I have a similar situation with a young girl who's married. Hmm. Same thing. Two kids. Her husband has been beating her. And she comes up with all of these. And it's expensive to leave a marriage. And it's... A you will die. Mm -hmm. Look, there was a story a few months ago. The boy beat the girl. The girl died. A few weeks ago, he's not going to jail. <laughs> he has been cleared. He is a free man. <laughs> oh, really? You can die. Oh. Oh. Like, let's not kid with domestic violence. Let's stop it. 
you can die. All I've got to say is, pack your things and leave. This whole thing of, oh, detach emotionally. One day, as he's detaching and she chokes him life, then what? We'll bury well, him. Like, sure. like, 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 yeah. like, stop. There's no excuse for this behavior. Leave. This one to us over that. Leave. No, I'm not over This one, I know my position, but <laughs> say, pack your things and leave. That's all. But it's true, it's very toxic. He yeah. needs to leave. All right, uh, Claudia, let me bring you in. Talk to me. Yes, and this is domestic violence. Let's call it what it is, domestic violence. And number one rule of domestic violence, you don't rationalize with the abuser. No. And that is what even the guy is doing. So although this, the space he's living in is no longer safe, he's still there trying to rationalize. But she's a good woman. How does she change? And he wants to, as a victim, he still wants to save his wife, basically. You are hmm. in harm's way, and she's, he's still looking for ways to redeem that situation that is falling apart. I would advise him to immediately find a safe space. Immediately. And two, let Dovsu know that your house is no longer safe. It's the same advice I'll give to a woman. That's uh -huh. the same advice I'll give Absolutely. to a woman. It's not a safe ever. And don't assume that because you are a man, she can't overpower you. Hmm. When people are overcome with anger, they are aggression and the strength that comes, they can sometimes overpower you even as a man. And when they have an object and they've planned, because now she knows your routine. She knows what you eat. She knows what you sleep. She knows your weaknesses. She, she knows your you. strengths. So I'm not even going to assume that because she's your wife, she has the best of intentions for you. Obviously she doesn't. As a lover. And might be actively plotting with a lover. I'm going to be the devil's advocate on all this. The two of them might actually be plotting a life together as you are there thinking of your future with her and your two twins. So now think about yourself and your kids. I want to assume because you are a man, you have that economic, I don't know who is the breadwinner, maybe because she's the breadwinner, she feels she has the power to control you and do whatever she wants. Because I mean, if you're having an affair, your, your partner has the right to question you. They, it's, it's their right. So she's broken so many rules, like Rosina said. It's, it, for me, it's, it's beyond repairs at this stage. But leave that house. It is not safe. If it means moving in with your family or friends, just move. And the kids, I'm also very concerned about leaving mm -hmm. these twins with mm -hmm. this woman who is pulling knives at you. So I don't know if you're going to talk to her family or talk to your family and try to pull the kids from the house and see and get those two involved. Because for me, when it comes to domestic violence, I don't care if you are sleeping with a man. He has to face the law. So you have to involve the authorities. And I know in Ghana, they also hear Franco Fionko CSC, where they hear Fia Sam, you know, is the mother of your kids, don't want the police, don't want it. I remember my dad's friend went to the police station to report the husband who was beating her, a, 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 a oh. man in the military. And the police officer that she met was an inspector, pulled her aside and said, do you know that if um, you take these allegations forward, your, your man might be demoted and it might derail his career. Wow. So even in going to the police, go with caution. It's <laughs> true. I wouldn't even advise you to go alone, mm -hmm. so that when you go and someone is trying to change your mind, you have someone, your family. Where, where is your family? Oh, no. Is that not what I asked? Where is your family? Afraid of stigma. It's, it's like yeah, because it's of the stigma, I'm, I'm getting I very. It. It's a stigma. It, yeah, and this is toxic masculinity. You mm. know, they've, they've, they've put it into your head that you're supposed to be the man. You're supposed to be in control. He actually says it. He'll mm. be ridiculed. Mm. Yes. No, but the and more I think about it, the boys more... Will laugh at you. Even women will laugh at you. Hey, the real bunno. You know? And even sometimes women, when they are being abused, they are, they are, they are, they are afraid to tell people. They feel they'll be ridiculed or maybe because they hyped How much their husband moment? so mm -hmm. much and now it's falling apart. So get, talk to someone, your family, um, an expert, as Rosina said, but leave that house. And I'm concerned about the kids. Find ways to get them out of that house, be it legal or through family or through mediation or arbitration or whatever, and make sure she's punished for that crime because she won't do it to another person that she marries. And users won't be stopped, they get encouraged, they get complacent, they feel they are now emboldened and will continue to do it. <laughs> Don't leave it as a family issue. Mm -hmm. because of mama, mama. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. No. Listen, abusers, abusers don't hmm. change. No. They don't change. Abusers don't change. Once a person abuses you once, 
99 percent they'll do it again they will continue to do it until they overpower you look i will say you will die I don't know how else to say this. It is what it like, is. Like, it is what it is. You can die. Do you understand? She has done it for three years. Charlie. Charlie. Don't get out of that And she's still house. going to the social club. Mm, obviously. Can you even tell her not to go? Can you? Can you? You know what? You know what? I'm not even addressing her. I won't address her. No, I'm, I'm not addressing her, but I'm just saying that. Like, she's beyond, you know, like, no, you're not. Mm. No, you're not. Like, I'm, I'm disgusted by her. How, how are you? How? How do you marry somebody, birth twins for a person, and pull a knife? Like, you like know, it's not bad enough you slapped him. You know what? And we're in an era where... You know, a lot of women, we are trying to have women's voices heard to avoid some of these things. And, you know, we are being very proactive. Like, you know, women should be treated better. Women should be this. Women should be that. And we are making inroads where women are finally having a voice. They can complain. They can do, do this. this. They come and do this. <laughs> you know, for me, even let's look. I'm just saying that on the global front, it's actually a shame. For all women, yeah, I, for a woman, look, woman to do this, but in the home, like everybody is saying, I mean, for a woman to fair. do this, it's just like I think that we should just need to. I, I, get I out. you know, I, I, I hmm. this whole thing of he'll be, he'll be ridiculed, okay, and and so I'm going to take the story a little bit away from him, po, to general people who are abused generally. Look, do not listen to anybody who says. It's expensive to get a divorce. You can die. Do not listen to anybody who says, because of their children, you can die. Do not listen to anybody who says, oh, he or she will change. You can die. And she's proven it. She's, she's pulled she a knife. pulled a knife. Do you understand? So you, you, you're on there. You have told you to leave. But everybody who is being but abused leave? there... I beg you in your home, if you are being abused by your partner, these are the excuses society will throw at you. Oh, it's expensive. Oh, their children. Oh, he will change. Oh, he's not like that. Please, your body does not belong to your partner. Neither does your life. The children that they say, trust me, they see these things. They do not want mommy or daddy to be miserable. In fact, they will grow up and when they ask you, and you actually have the audacity to say, I stayed because of you, they will resent you because all of their childhood, you left them with a miserable parent, mother or father. So please, you do not deserve abuse. No matter who is abusing you, you, you do not deserve abuse. Leave. I completely agree. Andrea, on now, that point, yeah. okay, go ahead. On that point of the kids um, resenting you later, the other side is that they see this and then they feel that is what fatherhood is. Yes. Mm. Like, so they grow up, internalize these toxic relationships that they are they are they are inhibiting as children, and grow up, and it affects them. There are studies to prove it. If you grow up in an abusive home, it affects you. You might be lucky and you are you are tough. But most people, they internalize it and then it becomes their frames of how they interpret romantic relationships, which is very dangerous. So, leave. Okay. And I wanted to add one last thing that um, I hope you have some form of evidence. The reason yeah. why I'm saying that is because when it comes to custody of the kids, I don't think you would. Mm. Because normally when the children are like four, like at four, every court would naturally want to leave the kids with their with mother. mother. Mm. But if the mother is the one who is extremely abusive, you need to make a case so that you can have custody of the children. Because if you lose custody of the children, you yes, you save yourself mm -hmm. and but. you are okay. But your kids may end up seeing your mother in very toxic relationships with other men. So I think that in as much as you want to get out, you want to get out, I think that you need to save yourself and the kids. So in the divorce proceedings and everything, try and get absolute evidence of her level of violence 
maybe if it's chats that you've had after the violence, she slapped you, moments and stuff like that. Keep all those chats. Keep all the of those The next time things. she hits you, video. Yeah. Video, yes. Do put a video. Or maybe you can even install ah. um, secret cameras, oh, like in the house. Mumpo, the next like time secret she hits cameras you. in the house. So that anytime something <laughs> like that happens in the house, the confrontations and everything, you have it on <laughs> camera so that you can win custody of your children. Very important. I'll just say, um, by telling the story that happened many years ago, I remember I was young, but I, I followed that story quite closely. It happened at Redco mm. in Medina. Okay. Woman was a, being abused by her husband, um, and then she actually moved out, did the right thing, moved out. Then the church came in and told her it's not good for, to divorce, mm -hmm. da, 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 go back to your mm -hmm. husband. Like everybody mounted pressure. And she went back. She went back. Hmm. A couple of months later, he threw her off a balcony. Okay. Redco Flats. Threw her off a balcony okay. to her death. Okay. Wow. Yes. And I remember that story so well. I was very young, but I remember that story. So some of these things that we talk about are real. You know, whether the abuse is coming from the woman or, or the, the man. man. Abuse should never on any kind of level be condoned in relationships. When the one who's supposed to protect you is the one who's harming you, you're in a very dangerous place. And you should not, like, it's, it's not child's play. Take it really seriously. A couple of messages. Na says divorce is an important option. Mm. Ellen says reporter to the police. Stop thinking of what society will say. Your Thank life you. is very important. If you feel you don't, she won't be believed. Get evidence. Report her. Marion says she never loved you and she won't. Leave before you end up in prison. That relationship isn't healthy. If you don't leave, you will become the monster. Nat says, sometimes the best solution is to walk out of that marriage, even though it will hurt you deeply. Yao says, I was raised never to hit a woman, so I never hit her back. Adieno die wa You know that if you try hitting back, she will finish you. <laughs> it's true. No, there are some women who are strong. It's true. I mean, I, I know someone who's a point. Yeah. The man let, 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 yeah. Yeah. Says, beat her. says <laughs> she wasn't equally trained to beat men. Anyway, report to Dove Suit before she sends you to your grave. A mm. cheating wife who is violent? Eh? Jinyame. Yeah. Rama says, put a recorder in your house. Record everything. Call a family meeting. Play it to them. Say goodbye to her. No one deserves an abusive partner. Your life and sanity are important. Docker says, well, I don't know you personally, but I'm sure all these red flags were there when you were dating and you decided to ignore it. Let her family know about it. Kafui says, it's good to be trained, but it's wise to unlearn some things in life. It will serve you and save you and the kids and maybe Ooh. your wife. Being it's or good. acting like the good guy doesn't help sometimes. First report, the abuse at the police station. Okay. She'll be called and warned or whatever they're supposed to do. Next time, record the abuse, but protect okay. yourself from the hitting, though. Don't hit her back in this instance. Just do well to restrain her. And finally, one from Ifia says, report her to Dovsu, the police, her family. Make sure you leave the house as quickly as you can after you report her. Immediately you do so, pack as fast as you can and separate for a while because I believe once you've reported her, she'll become more violent mm -hmm. towards you. While away, do your possible best to get custody of the children because she may eventually unleash her anger onto the children. I have a feeling she wants to get rid of you and enjoy life with her partner. Please, your sanity and life is more important. If in the event of time she doesn't seem to be remorseful and amend her ways, my dear, a broken marriage is better than a shortened life. Those are a couple of your comments. We'll go for a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, sister, sister on City TV and City FM. Your comments are welcome. 054-998-6996. Let's hear your thoughts on any of the messages received today. And here's a final message. It says, good evening, sisters. Well, how do I get my father to understand that the inheritance he's leaving us is needed now? As in, <laughs> now. <Hey. laughs> My father, <laughs> that's fire on the mountain. My, son. <laughs> my father has money and okay, assets and is, yeah. that he's left to my siblings and me mm -hmm. for when he's no more. But we're struggling now, and in the present, we need it. Mm. Each time we try to talk to him to liquidate some into cash, all he says is, Modachin Tio. I don't understand what use the future will be to us when we're struggling now. To the extent of needing to borrow money to help with his 
health issues. Mm. We love him dearly, but his stance on this matter is unshakable, and it's sad asking around for money that we technically already have. Help. All right, this is different. <laughs> this is interesting. So I have a... I have a hmm. <laughs> so there was a story where a mother had told her kids um, which of her property was going to go to which of them. And one of them came and said, but I want my property now, now. Mm. Like the house you want to give me, give it to me now. Mm -hmm. And the mother said, oh, no, but it's for when I die. And he actually asked, what if I die before you? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is that child. <laughs> you need the thing now. It's, child, is this male or female? It's hard to it tell. Doesn't it sounds say. like a guy, though. Yeah, it sounds like something a guy would say, right? <laughs> Look work hard and, and sort your current problems out now. The property that your dad is going to leave for you is not yours. Mm. Do you get what I mean? He works for his money. He works for his property. He owns it now. It's a, in fact, he can decide that he will even will it to you people. Has that occurred to you? He can decide that all of the hard work I've done, all of the property I have amassed, mm -hmm. I'm going to give to charity. Then what? People need to recognize that people's property does not... He's your father, yes, but the property is not yours until he has died or until he has specifically said so. Come out your eye from there. Put your eye on how you can resolve your current problems as an adult. Because if you're of age, you should either be working... You, and, I, and look, I'm not saying that you don't have problems. I'm not saying problems don't exist. I know life can be hard. But imagine you didn't have a dad who has wealth do you get what i mean like mm. if your dad didn't have wealth <clears throat> you would still find a way to live wouldn't you charlie it's not your money calm down when he dies you give it to you you want us to tell you that you're going to kill your father abby we will not tell you that i think his frustration is also coming from the because it says uh, to the extent of needing to borrow money to help with his father's yeah, help uh, yes uh, yes if his dad was a poor man who didn't have any money would they find a way to look after him? Mm -hmm. You see, my point is, you're feeling this way because you know your dad has money. But it's not your money. If you didn't feel entitled to the money now, you would find a way to look after your father. Any, by hell or high water, you will find a way. You're sitting there feeling this way, having to borrow to look after. If your father was a poor man and he was ill, would you not borrow money to, to, to help his health? You will. So why? Do your duty as a child. Okay. All right, Rosina, what do you think? <laughs> I think your father is a legendary man. He's a good man. He's a fantastic man. He's trying to teach his children how to survive in this world. And like Sandra said, it's his property. We're even lucky you know mm. that you, 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 you even know where his properties <laughs> are at and you even know what he has willed to you. I said, you know that he's actually giving it to you. He just wants you to be sorted out when he leaves. That's one part. The second part is that he probably knows the kind of children he has. Thank you. He knows very well that giving you that money, he knows exactly what you're going to use it for. iPhone 13. <laughs> Followed by the biggest mm. WAP. Mm. You go and put girls mm -hmm. that, you know, you go and do three days with, and then you come and tell us that... Uh, the money is finished. Uh, uh, they are pregnant and you can't locate them after <laughs> nine years. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so your father knows the kind of children he has. Mm. And he's trying to make sure that before he leaves this world, he wants to make sure that you are able to make life for yourselves. I'm sure he's even regretting letting you know what he has and the fact that he has mm. given it to you before. Mm. You understand? So he's trying to make sure that you have a footing so that at the point where he's being called home to go and rest, he knows that my children can survive in this world no matter what. Look, let me be frank and sincere. Most of the people that we grew up with who had everything handed over to them at will, who were traveling left, right, center. No, I'm saying travel, not because their parents are traveling, but because like, oh, just go for vacation mm -hmm. here, vacation there. The newest thing that came into town, they always had it. Today, today, where are they now? Some of them, when you see them, you are so disappointed. They'll be hiding, crap. You, they'll be hiding from you. Then we, the no quick beshi beer children, you know, <laughs> that we struggled down before we even got our passports when we were full adults. You understand? We did our first travel with our own money. 
you know, now you're at a point where if today, today I want to travel, I can travel on my own. But I'm thinking, if my parents were, you know, just dishing it out to me left, right, center, there would have been no real energy mm -hmm. to try and make it and survive in this world. So you see, sometimes it's like, sometimes they're very wicked, seemingly wicked or harsh parents or hard parents, sometimes they are doing you those things good. for our own good. Mm -hmm. Because once you learn how to survive on your own, when that, finally, that money finally gets into your hand, you appreciate the value of that investment or mm -hmm. that property or that money that you are getting. You should liquidate it now for you to do what? Mm -hmm. You Look after him. No, for you to his do health. what? So he's at his health. He's no, the man, money you know himself. that the guy has left things for you. So if you go and borrow to even take care of him, not hiding. Thank you. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. It's not like you're not even. It's not like you are taking care of somebody that at the end of the day, if if something happens, you are you are you are left without nothing and you are left with so much debt. No, you are, the guy has actually. Look, you know what? Forget about this thing. Eh? Strive to make it. Strive to make it and make your daddy proud Thank before you. he leaves this planet. Thank you. I think that he's just teaching you how to fish mm. and not to give you fish. Mm. So take the opportunity. A lot of and people. Learn to fish. Most of us here <laughs> wish that we had parents who gave us an opportunity to work with them or work with other people, work with their friends. Well, at least I had the opportunity. I had to work my way. From secondary school, I've been working since mm -hmm. I was in SS1. Every vacation, I'll go to an uncle's place and work, you know, office assistants, things like that. So I think work, make your own money. Start learning how to save your own money. Make your own investments. And that is when, after he has willed it, when there are angry family members who come and do dispute and everything, mm -hmm. you will spend your whole life fighting over property because you know that like, that is the only thing that defines you. Mm. Make your own investment, your own property that you would also be leaving for your children. At this rate, you squander your father's property and there will be nothing to even leave for yourself, much less your children. Mm. Please, look sharp. Fish your own fish. All right, Claudia, let's bring you in. I'm very confused. I, I... <laughs> Why? <laughs> this whole problem is because human beings, when we are doing things for our kids and parents, we see it as insurance. And, and so we feel entitled. So a father takes care of the kids with the intention that the kids will grow up to take care of him. And children also, because their parents have taken care of them, they grow up thinking they have that duty and responsibility to take care of their kids. Out here, I see a different arrangement where parents took care of kids, Kids are now very gainfully employed. They are on their own. But when it comes to their parents' upkeep, they are caring for their parents from their parents' pension, from their parents' investment, to the extent that they even would sell their parents' house, put them in a home, and then use the money from the selling the house to be paying for their upkeep at the home. So I'm very confused as to the life story this man is trying to teach his kids. Because the truth is, they are not learning that lesson. They will end up borrowing, you will die, and they will liquidate all the property to pay off the debts that they are borrowing. So I don't really know, even if I'm, I'm going to advise him to talk to his dad, I don't know what is motivating the man to the extent that he's sick, needs medical care, has the means to do it, has refused to do it, and is rather expecting his kids to take care of him. And again, it comes back to the mentality with which we give birth and yeah. we feel entitled to our kids taking care of us. And that's our culture. That's what we've been socialized to do. But I, I have a problem with that because in this case, you have the means. And whatever lessons you are teaching these old adult kids with gray hair, I doubt they are learning it. And you are putting yourself at a risk. You might die before you expected time because your kids are not going to learn that lesson. So for this guy, I don't really know what to tell him. I, I'll just tell him to have a frank conversation, like the kids have a frank conversation with their dad. They are not interested in the property. This is our financial position now. We really need your help because we are sinking under debt. So if you can give us money to pay your bills so that at least we, because, because he's your dad doesn't mean you should unnecessarily put yourself in harm's way when he has the means to take care of himself. It's different when he's poor and can't take care of himself. He's dying and you are also poor and you are struggling and then there's that burden and anxiety. He has the means. So whatever lesson 
Um, I don't know how to go about it because I don't know why the man is doing it. And I feel it will be an exercise in futility because their kids have not caught it. Because both adults have not sat to have that conversation. And he's saying, Moda chintio, Moda chintio. So I don't even know the lesson he's teaching because he's still indirectly telling them to wait for him to die so that you take the property. So maybe they might even kill him. <laughs> that, that's what he that's why he has written to us. <laughs> he says Moda chintio. So wait, let me die. Then he's not saying Monko Bomo bra. Now Mamun dream. So even on his sick bed, he is still grooming his kids to be reliant on him. With that statement of Moda Chintino, he's still grooming them that, hey, whatever I'm doing is for you, but if I die, you are going to get it. So I don't know where this is going because I can tell the guy is very reliant. It's, it's like a very codependent relationship and it's typical of our society. But this man has the means, and he should help himself for his own good. Like, safeguard your health. Don't burden your kids unnecessarily. And I don't want to critique the father because he's already failed. They didn't catch the lessons when they were growing up. They're already spoiled. <laughs> and he's trying to teach them a lesson now, yeah. <laughs> which is going to make the, the liquidation of the property faster when he dies. Because now there's even a legitimate cause to liquidate it. You see, they car. So we have to liquidize the property quick, quick. They need to have a conversation. They need to understand why that moda chinti in itself, Nekra, is making them more reliant because now they know. We don't even have to work. Oh, let's borrow. <laughs> let's borrow. When he dies, there's a house we can sell. So they've still not caught that lesson. So young man, have a conversation with your dad. Tell him, let him know the crisis that you are in. Uh, you are doing your best uh, with your siblings as the, 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 the responsible kids that he wanted you to be, but now you are struggling. So if not to liquidize the properties for you guys to be well off, at least for him to live, I think he deserves to live. I don't know why he's decided to put himself in harm's way, like, I'm not going to take care of myself, I'm going to watch my kids. It's, it's the whole story. Okay. No, is but, but I think it's possible that he's paying his main hospital bills so. I'm sure they're borrowing because I don't think any man will have money and say that, okay, I'm dying and I won't pay. look after myself. I yeah. think that the borrowing to look after him is usually the yeah. extra thing. I mean, they are, they, just like, they, are, they are so not well up to the extent that yeah. even to bring him food at the hospital, to bring him oranges mm. at the hospital pool, mm. like they care. Mm. You understand? But I think that in terms of maybe if there's some major money that has to be paid, I'm sure he probably has insurance or he has enough money to do that. But I'm sure he wants to see that the children are responsible and can bring money out to do something. If you think the borrowing is not good enough, work at it. I'm not saying that, look, it's the best approach. But all I'm trying to say is that we have a lot of children. Once they know that their parents are well of well to do, they think that they have a right to all manner of handouts. Hmm. And it's okay. The child, the father can do their part. It's okay, I'm caring for myself and everything. These are your properties. I'm giving it to you or I'm not giving it to you, whichever. But you see, every man or every parent wants to exit the planet, knowing that my children are mm -hmm. well off. Mm -hmm. Yes, he didn't get the memo early. He thought he was giving the best to his children, but he realized that his children didn't appreciate it and he squandered even the little they were given. So even though it's late, it's better late than never, he's trying to instill this kind of discipline in the children. So I'm just thinking that, look, yes, the man has made his property, has made his things. If worst case scenario, you can say that, look, I can't borrow to take care of you, daddy. So, I mean, when it comes to taking care of you, X, Y, Z. But at the end of the day, the way your eyes are in the property, you know, this is your investment for the property that you're expecting. Mm. Okay. I'm, the, I'm, I'm glad that, to... that, quick, very quickly, I'm glad Claudia mentioned that they are spoiled because this is spoiled child behavior. Mm. Okay, look, young man, um, I know people who have borrowed against property in court fighting for the property. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. The, the person has died. They are fighting the person's will with the person's actual people by taking a full scalp and going around and saying, oh, please, pay my court bills because if I win this court case, this You'll property so, will so become... Many. So, if indeed you can't work, you are so spoiled, you can't work and look after your father, borrow against his property. We'll end the show here. Thank you very much, ladies, for your time. And, of course, to our audience for um, always joining us on Sister, Sister. Really appreciate it. Claudia, 
lots of love as always um, yeah. yeah and a big thank you to our sponsors Vodafone together we can um, Geisha Geisha African strength and Kelk is toothpaste happy smiles my name is Jessica thanks for watching bye bye for now